What is going on guys, Rango Vizamango12 here and we are jumping into the final issue of Spider Island with issue 5. So it's been quite a pretty major thing in these run-up comics to this final event. We've got Tony Stark risking his life to save everybody, we've got Flash Thompson leading the way of like the resistance against these guys, and of course we had Peter Parker coming back from the supposed death, and it's all gone a little bit crazy. So in the previous issue we saw the Spider Queen turn into this giant monster that is just going to take everyone down, and well we're not going to know what's going to happen until we get into it so let's go! So, something I think this issue does brilliantly is that it pretty much throws us directly into the action and I mean they're already at mid fight at this point and you can see that everyone's there and they don't necessarily have a plan, they don't necessarily know how to take this thing down and even Spider-Man doesn't know what to do at this point. Now something that I absolutely love about this series is that even though it's Spider Island, it's pretty much based around Flash Thompson being Agent Venom and saving the day, saving the world or at least that section of Battle World anyway. And I think it really fleshes out Flash Thompson's character as Agent Venom. Like, I mean, look at the screen right now. Flash Thompson is literally pushing his limits, even risking his life for everyone to take down the Spider Queen. Because obviously, the first time he went up against the Spider Queen, Peter Parker died, a lot of people died, and Agent Venom pretty much failed. Whereas this time, it looks like he feels that he has a chance to redeem himself and not let the same mistake happen twice. So something that's really important in this issue that we actually discover and something we discovered in the previous issue is that the symbiote actually wants the Spider Queen to die. Flash Thompson revealed in the previous issue that he feels the symbiote allowing him to have more control because the symbiote wants him to beat the Spider Queen. And in this issue we actually get this discovery that the symbiote obviously is alive but it's willing to risk its life to take over the Spider Queen and pretty much throw it off the edge of the building. Now one thing that I must point out really quick here guys is that you know these little black boxes Boxes, that is actually the symbiote talking to Spider Queen right now. So usually the dialogue in the boxes means that it's Flash Thompson thinking in his head, whereas now that the symbiote is separated from Flash Thompson, we're pretty much hearing what the symbiote is thinking and what the symbiote is saying to the Spider Queen. Now if I'm going to give my honest opinion about this, I feel like the main fight against the Spider Queen was a little bit short. It was awesome when Agent Venom pushed his limits through the sonic blast of the Spider Queen and webbed her eyes and all of that, but after that it all seemed a little bit too easy. You know, all they had to do was get the symbiote to chuck the Spider Queen off a building and that was pretty much it for her, but luckily I don't think of it that way. I see it more from a storytelling perspective and I believe that this issue is more directed between the relationship between Peter Parker, Flash Thompson and the Venom symbiote actually having a characteristic and making it seem like more of a real person, like it actually had feelings for Flash, saying that Flash was its friend and I think that's just awesome the way that they did that. Now I think it's an incredibly emotional part of the comic right here because it really seems like Flash is about to die and it reminds me of the Spider-Man 3 movie where Harry Osborn dies and like Peter and Mary Jane are like over his body crying. I don't know why but that's like the kind of vibe I get from that, but you can see that Flash is kind of apologising to Peter about giving him a hard time in high school when he used to bully him and obviously high school's high school is kind of just like your life doesn't truly start until out of high school so yeah as you can see Peter kind of just says that's nonsense Flash don't worry about it and I kind of think wait is this Agent Venom Flash Thompson the 616 universe Agent Venom Flash Thompson because if it is then well he's died now so what's gonna happen with that? So the Spider Island has ended and the Spider Queen has been destroyed and it turns out that all the people that got turned into spiders and like obviously other animals and mammals and all that crazy stuff, some have actually decided to stay like that because the abilities that they gain from turning into these creatures, they actually like. It sounds a little bit messed up. But something that I thought was pretty funny was the fact that one of the fours turned up who worked for Doctor Doom and he's also like a lizard, which really fits the theme of the comic, which I thought was funny. So as Spider Island is coming to a close, Peter and the rest of them really want to do Flash justice and make him proud and actually want to name the city after his name, like call it Flashville or Flash City or something along those lines. And then we get like this awesome page of where everyone's just living happily in their new creature bodies, all free, not having to worry about spider creatures running around. Well, actually some of them may have stayed spider creatures, so I'm not too sure about that, but that is the end of Spider Island, so guys, what did you think? Let me know in the comments below, but as always, we jump over to the second side of the comic, which is a little mini story to do with Spider-Woman, and of course, the story continues with Hope Pym utilising Infrello's powers to take over the Avengers, and at the end of the previous issue, we saw Spider-Woman's friend Cassie, also known as Stinger, being manipulated to kill her father. Now luckily Spider-Woman got in there and got him out of the way as soon as possible and managed to take down Stinger before she had another chance to take down her father. 
Now, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the artwork in this mini story is a little bit off for me. Like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And right now, I'm not really liking it too much. But as we go back to the story, we learn that this Daredevil that is in this universe, obviously this is before Secret Wars kicked off, the Daredevil in this universe has an actual demon inside him. Like, he has a dark side, like an actual Daredevil side. And when Enfrella taps into that, it actually causes her to, like flip out and she just gets taken down instantly but i feel like this mini story was a little bit of a throwaway story as well i'm not too sure but we also got uncle ben returning to the mantle of spider-man there to help mayday out and of course at the end of the issue we get like this whole overview of what's happened about how she's going to be okay with what's happened and she's going to move on with her life living the legacy of her father peter parker and right at the end it says the end for now so what does that mean does that actually mean that we could be seeing spider-woman again in the future what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. So now that the issue's over, now that the Spider Island series is over, what do you guys think of the overall series as a whole? Do you like Agent Venom as Flash Thompson being the semi-main character of this and then Peter Parker coming back to life? And what is your like final verdict? I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 because I really love to see that bond between Flash Thompson and the Venom symbiote. But not only that, but to kind of bring the Venom symbiote to life, giving it more of a human characteristic, having feelings for a character, which was just awesome. And then, as I've said, the Spider-Woman after mini story is kind of a little bit of a throwaway for me. It kind of feels like they just chuck that in there for fan service. So if that's what they did it for, fan service, then that's okay. But yeah, I kind of, I was a little bit disappointed with like the overall thing. I kind of feel like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think about that. But now that we're coming towards the end of the video, guys, go to the links in the description to follow on Twitter and Facebook for all the latest in comic book news and updates and early previews of, say, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 comic. Early preview before it even releases. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter to hear about when my videos are going to be updated, when they're going to be uploaded, whether I'm having problems with them. And of course, for more comic book news on there as well. And don't forget about the Amazing Spider-Man issue one physical comic giveaway that I'm doing over on my Instagram. You can go to the links in the description to check that out. And last but not least, guys, if you want more, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button on this video, and I will see you all later.